Today, by request, I'm working on a throating reamer for uh, 4570. So, to get started, I've taken lots of swagings from my chamber and figured out the case bore diameter, the rifling diameters at ahead of the case bore, and as you can see by this swaging, there is absolutely no throat at all. The rifling comes right up to the case bore chamfer. And then I made a push through to find the largest part of the barrel, which happens to be near the muzzle. So I'm going to have to lap this barrel until the rest of the barrel is uh, the same diameter as the muzzle diameter. And I recorded those maximum dimensions here. As you can see, we're running about uh, 4575. So then, using the case bore diameter, which happens to be 481, minus the wall thickness of the case, which is 11 thou, or 22 thou for two walls, I come up with a uh, case bore bullet diameter of 459. Now that's the maximum that will allow bullet release without an interference fit. So, as it turns out, conveniently, 458, which is the ideal size for a 4570, is perfect for this gun. It's a half a thou over the largest rifling grooves. So, we set about making a throating reamer. Now, normally for my air gun reamers, I do a solid pilot. See if I can get this in focus a little better. There we go. A solid pilot with a back relief area which leads into a one and a half degree relief angle. And then there's my throat diameter section right there. And then it's back cut again to allow clearance for chips and then I record those dimensions on the shank of the reamer. In this particular case I thought that this 458 throating reamer might come in handy for future projects so I did a live pilot <clears throat> by turning down the front section to exactly 250 and making a bushing which exactly fit my rifling lands at uh, 0.452 and then this end is drilled and tapped 832 and a screw, simple screw is going to hold that piloted bushing on the end there. The upper end of the case chamber dimension is 0 0.507 this end of the case measured on the gun is 0.481 so I turn the entire section 0.481 so that it would center here and then made a slip collar right here that will align the case at the rim end so this reamer is going to be suitable for a wide variety of guns. So let's get into the nuts and bolts here. This section of the reamer right here is undercut below the land diameter. It doesn't matter how much it's undercut. I typically use ten thousandths of an inch to provide some swarf clearance and a spot for cutting oil to live. And then I come into a two degree included angle on a lead section here. So that's an included angle, which means this side is one degree, this side is one degree. Here is the actual 458 section. And here is an undercut to allow swarf clearance and oil retention. Now, I worked with the mold maker to uh, 
come up with an ideal mold and an ideal throat. And he is suggesting that I should have a throat length of 650 thou. So from that ridge to the beginning of the taper is 650 thou. So let's get into hardening this baby. Here's what I use for an anti-scaling compound. It's uh, Brownells non-scaling compound. It is simply borax mixed with clay. Finely ground clay, finely ground borax, and it prevents uh, the wasting of the material and the loss of carbon from the surface area of the tool steel. To apply it, you just warm up the part to 500 degrees, blue color. The section I'm most concerned about is the section that has the cutting edges. Anything beyond that is entirely irrelevant. Oh, there is one thing I forgot to do, and that is I really want to put this screw in the end to stop that uh, flux from, uh, from going inside. So I'm just going to put the camera down here and screw that screw in there. Alright, so there's my sacrificial screw in the end of my threads, and I'm just going to warm my part up the blue color here. Okay, we're coming up on straw. Buckwheat straw and into blue. Just draw that heat down more to the tip. And once you have a blue color all over the area that you're going to be hardening, tip it into the scaling compound. Get it nice and coated. One of the things that the scaling compound does is it slows the transfer of heat into the part which is a good thing when you're hardening a part because it prevents warpage All right. so I harden my parts while spinning We'll be quenching it in ordinary oil. You can use any oil you want. I use vegetable oil because, uh, you know, the folks upstairs, when they smell burning vegetable oil, they think I'm making french fries down here rather than blowing up engines. So just ordinary vegetable oil. You want a piece of plate that you can use to cover the vegetable oil because the vegetable oil should be quite warm, somewhere between 150 and 200 degrees. And when quite warm oil hits red hot parts, it typically bursts into flames. If that happens, set your can down on a surface, cover it with the plate, problem solved. Okay, I am going to start this drill press running and turn on this small torch, which I use to just bring some heat into the part. This is not my main heating torch. This is just the torch I use to slowly bring the part up to temperature. 
this is going to take a couple of minutes for that flux to get quite warm. So I'm going to break this video off here and switch to a second video.